Well, hello and welcome to our history uh, presentation, Introduction to History at uh, Hills Road. <coughs> I'm Chris Wilkins, I'm the Head of History uh, and the other presenters for you today are just going to quickly introduce themselves to you now, starting with Mrs Weber. Oh, hello there, um, my name is Charlotte Weber um, and I'm a history teacher um, in the history department at Hills um, and I teach across the HR and HC history courses. Hi, I'm Jess Lennon. I take the HC course. I'm a student in year 12. Hi, I'm Kathleen Morris. I'm a student at Hills and I take the HC course. The HR course. Hello, I'm Ethan Smith and I take the HR course and I'm in year 12. Thank you all. So um, the students who've kindly joined us today are going to be talking about their uh, experiences of history um, a little bit later uh, and I'm going to start now by uh, taking you through um, the um, history courses um, that we offer. We offer two courses, um, HC and HR, Crisis, which is short for Crisis, Conflict and Communism and Rights, Race and Revolutions. Um, and um, we offer lots of opportunities, enrichment and support um, whilst you're studying these courses. Um, and we hope that most students find uh, studying here extremely enjoyable and rewarding. So let's move on to the courses. Um, and uh, some of the topics that you'll be studying. There's a huge range of uh, fascinating issues and uh, events that you will study. Um, whether, for example, it's studying uh, the famous or the infamous Trabant car that you can see in the bottom left hand corner there, a uh, symbol in some ways of East German society, or off the right hand side, the big three as they were known, uh, Roosevelt, Churchill and Stalin uh, meeting at Yalta in the Crimea to effectively decide uh, the fate of Europe at the end of World War II. Um, or perhaps studying uh, some of the key battles of the English Civil War you can see represented at the top of the page, such as the Battle of Naseby or the Battle of Marston Moor. And these events in many ways kind of typify the kind of issues you'll be, dis you'll be looking at, uh, sort of uh, epoch changing events, significant events that had a major impact on the way history panned out. Or perhaps the decisions made by policymakers, exemplified by the big three at Yalta, or the lives of people in ordinary <laughs> societies, ordinary people living in, say, a communist society, such as East Germans uh, driving their travel. Parts. And it typifies the range of topics that you'll get to study. And the medal here symbolizes uh, a commemoration uh, with the communists in Russia trying to build um, a true kind of communist society. This was commemorating the foundation of the USSR uh, 60 years later in 1982. And particularly fascinating in some ways is this disarmament dollar which is actually made out of decommissioning missiles um, from the Cold War, <laughs> conflict between capitalism and communism um, with um, the um, disarmament dollars. This was to commemorate the, um, uh, the um, Cold War ending or beginning to end between um, Gorbachev uh, and Reagan, <laughs> an agreement to decommission um, missiles. Um, Martin Luther King says, we are not makers of history, we are made by history. But despite his statement, he actually obviously did quite a bit to contribute to history, to um, direct history. Um, and um, uh, you'll study key individuals such as um, Martin Luther King um, whilst you're um, taking the course. Uh, and you'll consider their role and consider their role alongside perhaps more impersonal forces, uh, kind of forces uh, sort of uh, in society um, that perhaps sort of have an influence on history alongside the role of key individuals such as Martin Luther King. So let's look at the detail of our courses. We've got two courses um, that we do at Hills Road and you can choose either course. Uh, both are offered um, uh, with the OCR exam board. For the HC course, and indeed for the HR course as well, for Unit 1, you will study England in Revolution, the early Stuarts, the Civil Wars, the English Civil Wars, and Oliver Cromwell. 
and uh, you'll study the causes of the wars, um, the increasing discontent with the rule of Charles I and how that erupted into civil war in 1642. And then you'll study, as I say, some of the key events of those civil wars, battles, not just Marston Moor, Naseby, but Edgehill, Preston, how there were two civil wars uh, with the Scots changing sides effectively between the first civil war and the second civil war. And of course, the pivotal moment where Charles I, the only time in our history when a monarch was executed in 1649, leading to another unique event in our history, the 11 years where we had no monarch between 1649 and 1660, uh, Republican regimes associated most famously, of course, with Oliver Cromwell. And finally, to round off this course, you'll study the restoration of the monarchy with Charles I's son, um, Charles II being invited back to the throne in 1660. But you'll also study Germany, democracy and dictatorships in Germany, a fascinating period between 1919 and 1963, which encompasses uh, the attempt to establish a democracy, the Weimar Republic, um, after the uh, disruption and tensions caused by World War I, and then how that republic in turn uh, was um, replaced by the Nazi regime that took Germany into another war. And then you'll also study the attempts to actually rebuild a society in Germany um, after all the devastation uh, wrought by Germans and in 1945 upon Germans um, in the Second World War. But you won't just study one attempt to build a society, you'll study two separate and very different <coughs> attempts to build a new society. Um, a capitalist, uh, democratic, um, uh, state um, in West Germany, the FRG, and a communist state uh, following, uh, by and large, the instructions from Moscow um, in East Germany. And that, of course, uh, division famously symbolised in the Berlin Wall. And finally, for HC, um, with the exception of coursework, of course, which you'll um, hear about a little bit later, um, but in terms of the exams for HC, um, you'll study Russia, Russia and its rulers from 1855 to 1964. You'll study the attempt to create a communist society after the Russian Revolution of 1917. But before that, you'll study the various attempts of some czars, or at least one czar, to try and reform the old autocracy, the old order in Russia. Not all the czars uh, were so keen to do so, and in part, as a result, along with all sorts of other pressures, such as the First World War, um, Russia, of course, erupts into revolution in 1917, not just one revolution, but two revolutions. And then you'll see the attempts by Lenin, Stalin and Khrushchev in very different ways to build a functioning communist society. And you'll study events such as the, um, again, epoch making, making uh, kind of turning point of the secret speech by Khrushchev in 1956, where he denounced the excesses of Stalin's rule. Um, a real turning point, not just in Russian history, but world history. For example, many people leaving communist parties um, across Europe as a result of being disillusioned by what Khrushchev revealed in that speech. And so the events in Russia that you're studying have major consequences, not just for um, Russia itself, but also for the world as a whole. Or you can choose our HR course. And for HR, the unit one um, is identical. You'll also study um, the early Stuarts, civil wars and Cromwell. So all those issues um, around the personal rule of Charles I, um, the uh, political negotiations following the First Civil War um, and the attempt to create a Commonwealth or Republican regime following the execution of the King. All those are on offer to you as well um, if you choose the HR course. I'm going to hand over to Mrs Weber now who's going to tell you about the rest of the HR course. 
Okay, so paper two of the HR course, which is the equivalent of the Germany course in HC, is a paper on the Cold War in Europe. Um, many students perhaps have a knowledge of this from um, prior study at middle school or in high school. Um, and this is a paper that runs from 1941 to 1995. Um, so quite unusual dates for a Cold War paper, because not only are we looking at the events of the Cold War, um, but we're also looking at the origins of the war. Um, so looking at the kind of breakdown of the wartime alliance, um, as, as Mr. Wilkins hinted at, of the big three um, and thinking about the kind of decline in relations um, to the point that by 1949 we can talk about a cold war um, between um, America um, and, and, and the USSR um, and the, the um, breakdown of, of Europe into two armed camps. Um, but we also go right the way through to look at the aftermath of the Cold War. Um, and we take this through to 1995, and in particular, we, we think about sort of the impact of the Cold War. Um, and in, we look at the, uh, the wars in Yugoslavia um, in, in the aftermath of the ending of the Cold War in 1990. Um, this paper considers a range of, of issues. Um, so first of all, we'll consider the, um, the development of tensions up to 1949, um, and we consider the sort of the division of Europe into these um, political um, and economic um, divided blocks. Um, we then consider the relations and the kind of the, the building up of uh, armaments um, by the two superpowers, um, and we look at this sort of uh, pivotal event um, in 1962, the Cuban Missile Crisis, um, where the superpowers come perhaps as close as they ever do to a uh, nuclear war. And that then follows through, we look at uh, the era of detente, so this era of um, perhaps uh, more relaxed relations between the superpowers, um, before looking at the kind of the re-emergence of tensions with the uh, presidency of Reagan um, in the early 1980s. Um, we then look at the kind of collapse of, of Cold War tensions um, when we see Reagan and Gorbachev uh, working together um, in the latter period of the 1980s, um, which takes us through to you know, the ending of the Cold War by 1990 um, and indeed the ending of the Soviet Union in 1991. So that's the, um, the Iron Curtain paper, the Cold War in Europe, um, and that's where 15% of your A-level. Um, paper three um, for this, for the HR course, um, is our America unit. Um, so this is a unit on civil rights in the USA. Um, so this is our slaves to citizens paper. Um, and we look here at roughly a period of about 130 years of American history. Um, this paper sees us looking at four distinct groups. Um, so across this course, you will look at um, African-Americans. Um, so perhaps something that some students will have studied previously in their work, work in high school. Um, and we also look at Native Americans, we look at women um, and we look at workers. Um, and for each of those groups, so for example, for African Americans, um, we think about um, the kind of the aftermath of slavery um, in 1865. Um, and we take that group right the way through to 1992, thinking about um, how you know, to what extent they have managed to achieve civil rights or, or perhaps equality, and um, what kind of factors are hindering that journey towards um, civil rights and equality in the United States. Um, we also look at uh, Native Americans and we think about, their, again, their journey towards um, equality and um, equal rights, um, considering factors um, which have been to their detriment and factors which have worked in support of them. We look at the role of workers and trade unions. Um, so again, thinking about um, the, the sort of the positives and um, the developments which have improved their position um, and those that have hindered it. And likewise with women, we look at attempts to um, develop um, the civil rights across the period. Um, this is a paper which is studied um, in breadth, so from 1865 to 1992, you'll be looking at developments, you'll be looking at um, comparisons, connections and links between different time periods. There's also an element of interpretation, so there for three um, periods, you'll be looking in depth um, and you'll be looking at some you know, so historians' works um, and kind of interpretations on the position of these groups in three distinct periods. So collectively, that makes up the HR course. In addition to the courses, so 80% is obviously examined um, at the end of the two-year um, course. 
um, but we also have 20% which is given over to coursework um, and students traditionally have said that this is something that they have found to be of huge benefit to them. Um, the coursework is 20% of the overall A level um, and we offer a range of options so, so hopefully something for everyone. Um, we offer a medieval unit so there is an option to do a question on the life of Saladin um, perhaps something that students haven't previously studied so something that really sort of broadens um, their kind of range in terms of historical study here at Hills. Um, we also offer a unit, an early modern Europe, uh, early modern option on the witch hunts, um, for, and this is a kind of a, a sort of a, a issue uh, based paper looking at sort of perhaps gender issues on witch hunts in the early modern period. We've also got a question on the French Revolution. So looking at a particular aspect, um, the sort of the emergence of terror um, and where responsibility for that terror lies. Um, and we also have a modern option. OK, so for those that are not taking the HR paper, you would be able to do an option um, on coursework uh, on the Cold War. And um, so these are the topics that are on offer to you. Um, the key benefit really for this coursework is that it gives students a really wide skill set. Um, so this is something that is very much, um, you know, students own piece of work. Um, it is an independent piece of work. So we do, you know, we, we were trying to develop some of those skills that would be brought to bear um, in university. Um, and you know skills that students really find invaluable when they move up to degree level study. Um, so students will be required to you know investigate um, the key issues, um, to you know to come up with reading lists, um, to look at uh, you know primary source material, to engage with historians' interpretations, um, and to manage this piece of work, which is a, you know a, a large piece of work, four thousand word essay. Um, they will be you know developing the ability to analyse historical sources. Um, to construct an argument and obviously this key thing of being able to work independently um, on a new area of study. Um, so really, really invaluable, 20% of the coursework um, and really gives you know, students that, that kind of edge, that really um, superb skill set um, when moving into kind of degree level study. OK, so one of the key things um, to, 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 to obviously to show you what uh, history is like at Hills here is to, to have you talking to some of our, our students. Um, and I think the key thing um, I wanted to stress before I pass you on to our students is to talk about the kind of levels of support that we offer here. Um, so obviously this year has been um, <clears throat> rather unusual, but we do have a, 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 a daily drop-in centre, uh, so a daily drop-in class of History Plus, um, whereby students can come along um, and meet staff uh, every day, every lunchtime, um, to talk through um, any issues they have with the course, whether that be content, um, whether it be um, about technique, and whether it be about catching up from lessons that they have lost. Um, and staff, we you know we, we pride ourselves in, on providing a supportive environment, um, and hopefully you know being able to give that one-to-one -one support um, to to students on their sort of two-year sort of history um, program here whilst they're with us here at Hills. Um, but what I will do now is, if, if possible, I will pass you over to some of our students um, who can tell you a little bit more about what it is like studying history at Hills um, and this kind of the the experience that they've had so far. So first of all, I will pass you on to Jess. Jess, if you'd like to say a few words, please. Yes, absolutely. So I'm Jess, I study the HC course. Um, I think the bits that have really stood out to me, what I've enjoyed. Um, in the Germany course, what's been fantastic is building on the knowledge that I already had at GCSE. So I studied um, the rise of the Nazis from 1919 to 1933. Um, and what the HC course allowed me to do was study right through the advent of the Nazis, all the way through their period of rule, and then see um, the destruction of the Nazis and then what followed. So being able to study a whole period in such detail has been a real privilege for me. Um, and then for the Russia course, what I found is I knew nothing about Russia before coming into my A level. So the history teachers have really helped me build my knowledge from the ground up. We're studying a completely new period um, and studying a bit of 19th century history as well to take that, that period a little bit further back from the 20th century that we tend to study a lot. So I've really enjoyed the content of my course so far and I found that the teachers have been really supportive. Um, on the note of extracurricular, I've also been able to get involved in history society. So that's allowed me to um, study and get engaged in different periods of history that we don't get to study in class. So we have a different talk each week um, and someone can talk about an area of history that they're interested in. It can be literally anything. We've had talks from Margaret Thatcher um, to, oh, I'm just trying to think, um, all the way to military communications and how they've developed over time. So that's really given me the opportunity to explore a broader range of history outside my subject. 
Thank you, Jess. That's fantastic. Thanks ever so much. Um, Kathleen, can I pass over to you, please, to say a few words? Yeah, of course. So I study features, that's the right side of the course. Um, I found that you learn a surprising lot that you thought you already knew, but you learn it in a lot more detail. For example, I already studied a lot about American. I feel like a lot of people think they know about American civil rights. It's um, something that you see in the news a lot. But there's something, you learn a lot more about it, and you think that you discover that you can talk about these things in a lot more detail than you could before. And you figure out things that you thought were true. So when a lot of people think of civil rights and think Martin Luther King as a shining star figure of civil rights, it's interesting to see the other side of the course, you know, how he how you know, he fell down, where his downfalls were, and about you know the nation of Islam to the other side of the civil rights. So that's what I found about civil rights then. It's really interesting to think about. And when it comes to Charles and James, so we've kind of slightly touched on that course now, but we're getting into it. It's interesting to see, again, a course that you might think that you already know in a lot more detail than you would before. And it makes you think about things that you have in the modern day. And it allows you to think about things you might see in the news, things you might see online. And it allows you to think about them in a lot more detail because you're knowledgeable in the source. And then, as Jess said, there's a lot of extracurricular stuff that you can do, you know, history societies or kind of societies around here, really. And there's a lot of support and history. If you're ever struggling with anything, like every single one of the teachers is there to help you if you need it. And <laughs> they're only an email away, really. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, Ethan, can I ask you to say a few words, please? Yeah, uh, I'm Ethan. I'm taking um, the civil rights side of the course. And I'll say the main thing that I've enjoyed about history so far is its ability to have such a variety. So the civil rights part of the course, we've had both depth studies and also synthesis essays. So the depth is entailed going down into each group, as I think we've touched on earlier, with uh, African-Americans, workers, Native Americans and women, and be able to really go through all the different periods, but just focusing on a select few, such as the Gilded Age, the New Deal and Black Power. And I think being able to go through the same period and explore that with different groups is really interesting. And it's something we've never done before at GCC. I'd say for Britain as well. Um, the difference that that offers to America is really refreshing and really interesting and it just keeps you kind of capti captivated throughout. And I'll say um, particularly the packs that we get provided are really, really useful because they have the, the essential material, which is really useful to consolidate knowledge. But they also have further reading and extension activities, which really helps to build this bigger picture, which I think is one thing that's really nice stepping up from GC to A level is this ability to actually push it further and really extend your knowledge. And again, just reiterating the, the support offered is absolutely amazing and you just feel like you can keep challenging yourself and keep pushing yourself and there's no question that's too silly or too simple and it's just really, really good and I really have enjoyed history. Thank you, Ethan. Okay, so now we move on to our results um, and rightly we are very, very proud of our history students here at Hills um, and the results that we, you know, that we see from them um, each and every year. Um, so on the screen here we've got the uh, percentages, okay, so we can see uh, HC student performance is at A star to B, 81%. Um, um, and that is obviously, as you can see, quite a lot higher than the, the national average of 59%. Um, and then the pass rate to A star to E is 100%. So all students um, taking the HC course um, got, a, you know, got, got a grade um, uh, between A star to E. Um, if we choose now to have a look at the HR results. So likewise, a similar picture with HR and we can see that the uh, results a star to B, um, we've got a percentage of there of 77%, um, higher than the national average of 59. And likewise, um, in HR, we have a 100% pass rate for all our students. Um, obviously, both sets of results really, really you know, impressive, and we're very, very proud of our students. Um, but I think what we really hope these results um, indicate is that we have managed to do what we want to do in the department, which is to really bring about a love for the subject um, and a passion for the subject, which is reflected in these excellent results that our students um, bring about year on year. OK, finally, then, if we think about where our students head off to, um, obviously, you know, I get asked very often um, what, what, you know, what, what, what will history lead me to? What can I do with a history degree? What should I do history at university? Um, and what I would say is that history is something that is um, a highly respected degree. Um, it is something that is, um, you know, it, it brings about, a, it requires a, a, a wide skill set um, and you know history degree really opens all doors um, and so you know doing history at a level has opened up um, you know 
multiple doors for students to go on and take courses, whether that be in history itself at university or age in history, but also you can see the list there. You know, we have students that have done history A level going on to do, um, you know, courses in law at university, um, economics, fashion marketing even. Um, so I think the key point to put here is that, you know, a history A level um, shuts no doors and um, history A level really keeps um, all options open um, for degree study. And likewise, um, studying history at university um, likewise keeps all doors open um, and offers a wide sort of opportunity um, for, for, for future employment. Um, so hopefully um, that gives you some sense of, of where our students are heading off after completing their A-level history studies here at Hills. OK, I'm going to pass you back to the head of department, Mr Wilkins, um, just to, to finish off. Um, thank you for listening and um, hopefully see some of you um, at Hills um, in, the, in the autumn term. Thank you very much, Mr Weber, and thank you to Jess, Kathleen and Ethan for telling uh, you, you and us about their experiences studying history uh, here. We very much hope that you will want to uh, come and study history here and you're welcome to apply for either course, either HC or HR. The choice is entirely yours, which uh, course you apply for. Finally, just a reminder that there are all sorts of frequently asked questions uh, and further information on our college website if you're wishing to find out more about uh, history. Uh, thank you for listening um, and goodbye. <laughs>